Inside the Cardinal Playbook, we'll start off today with head women's basketball coach Jill Kress. We'll also visit with Larry Holly, and then a special feature on Sean Shelton, the former Jewel quarterback who now goes overseas to play. But first, let's talk with Jill Kress. It's, this is going to be a tough one because, yeah. I don't know, um, I don't mean to be too frank, but we're not playing real well right now, and, and three straight losses, a little tough and something different for you to handle. Yeah, hey, actually, I was trying to think. Uh, the last time we've had three losses in a row, it's, it's been a while, and, uh, you know, probably out of those last three, the one that was most disappointing was the Missouri S&T game because, you know, we had that game and, and let it slip away, and especially in this league, we can't do that. I mean, the games that you have the chance to win, you, you really need to finish them out and do that, and so that part was disappointing, and, uh, you know, we're playing hard. I thought uh, our last game against Drury, uh, they were number 10 in the nation. <coughs> um, I thought we played pretty hard and did some really good things. Uh, the first half we struggled, I think more so because of what we did. We were just trying to uh, do too much and, and really didn't seem comfortable out there. And they had a six foot seven player, right. yeah, which is something that on the women's side you don't run into very often. I think uh, in my 18 years I've I've done it twice now, mm. and uh, and she she did a nice job. Uh, one of the things that I thought we could do is really run her up and down, and uh, yeah, she actually did a pretty good job conditioning. Was and, and caused us a lot of problems there. The S and T game was on Thursday night on the road at Rolla, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then S, uh, after the S and T game, we went to Drury and played them. And as you said, number ten in the nation. Let's talk about the six seven six eight girl because again, you don't see that very often. I, I said on the air, you did about everything you could against her. I can't think of anything else you could have done. But how do you stop that? Yeah, and you know, uh, Coach Broughton was talking to the, their coach a little bit afterwards on how she ended up at Drury, and, and she was at the University of Minnesota, hadn't played for the last two years. She's actually graduated from college already, but still had uh, eligibility to play right. basketball. And um, came here and was really out of shape. And Coach Huber really worked hard. He he knew about her because he tried getting her at Creighton. Okay. And uh, when he was recruiting her at Creighton, she decided to go to the University of Minnesota. But you know, I, I, we have some different things that we may try. Or well, we will try the next time. But um, you know, we, we tried quite a bit. We tried fronting. We yeah. tried going behind. We tried zone. And and um, yeah, that's just, that was just really difficult for us sure. with, with Cassie's going 5-9 and you know she worked really <laughs> hard in there and, and you know and, and you know, the six seven kid really doesn't bring her the ball down much you know and, and a lot of times on the women's side they do they'll bring the ball but she did a great job of keeping the ball and the ball up when she caught it and uh, you know obviously we're going to struggle with that. Well and, and it wasn't just her they have some good players a lot of good perimeter players too as we said number 10 in the nation and they looked at it as they kind of got out to a big lead and held you off yeah. um, and so they were as good as advertised. Now let's go to that S&T game it's painful yeah. as it may be. You, uh, it was back and forth in the first half, but you got out to a 16 or 15 point lead with about 16 minutes remaining. And again, unusual for your your teams, uh, they came back on you. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, it actually, and, and you kind of get this once in a while where. The team was tighten up, and I thought we really tightened up and, and played not to lose. And it sounds dumb, but played not to lose rather than to win. Yeah. And when you play not to lose, it just kind of ends where, where you, you play tight, you try not to make any mistakes, and in, and in the end, you make quite a few. And, and um, from a coaching standpoint, just watching the film, um, you know, we press all the time and try to speed them up, but towards the end, uh, probably from a what I should have done is pulled off our press, uh, you know, the last five or six minutes, and, and given us a little bit of a breather and made them take some time off okay. uh, rather than speeding them up there. And, and yeah, you know, so you learn as a coach, and, and we just we kind of live and die by our press, and, and that time we died on it. And, and uh, you know, you just you have to look at adjustments. I asked my players to to look at things that we should have done better or they should have done better. And as a coach, you need to do that too. And you know, you, you look last year we lost to Rockhurst, was which was mm, the, right. at the bottom of the conference. Right. And, and you know we bounced back pretty well from there, and um, I expect the same thing with Missouri S and T. And, and you know, looking at the conference, our side this year is stronger than than the other, than the East side. And, and um, so when it comes down, you got to get yourself in the best position uh, to make the playoffs, and hopefully we can do that. Okay, what good can we take out of the uh, the, the weekend's games at S and T and at Drury? 
not sure a lot of good out of the S&T. I think there was a lot, there was at Drury. I thought that second half we'd really settled down. I mean, uh, we were 13 for 29 from three-point range, which uh, we had some kids that, that had been struggling from three-point that really came in, and you know, Kelsey Nickerson hit some. Jess Wheeler, who's been struggling a little bit, you know, hit some. Uh, Chris Keys, who uh, loves to shoot the three, and I don't let her very often, <laughs> came in was three for four, and so there were. I think there were some positives there, I, I, um, and really we played with them the second half. And you know, a lot of times you can say, well, a team subbed in, but. Mm -hmm. This is the other thing. They only had eight players, and yeah. so they, you know, they didn't pull the dog. Down. No, they they did they didn't. And for us to be able to play play with them uh, that whole part, I think that's a that's a positive that we can take from it. And uh, you know, next time we play, maybe we'll be settled down and be able to play right away. It seemed like a little bit like the energy was down. I don't know in both games a little bit. And is that because we've been on the road for two straight weekends? Is there if if you see that at all? Yeah, uh, you know, the energy thing to me was really glaring against the S and T game. I thought. Uh, the Drury game, it wasn't as much. I mean, uh, obviously Drury's much better than S&T, sure. and um, you know, and they're better than we are right now. Um, but I thought for that game, I really thought we we played with some energy and went, you know, and, and stayed with them. Uh, the S&T game, just watching that, it was I, I can't figure out why we were so sluggish, but we certainly were. And you know, part of it, I guess, a few of those kids were sick. I didn't realize that after. Uh, you know the winding roads down to yeah, Rolla. Oh yeah, the um, motion sickness. Yeah, I know. we had uh, two two of them that were pretty car sick, and then uh, Ariel Smith and I didn't realize this either. She never complains. Has really been struggling with a sore throat and not feeling well, and uh, um, so you know that could have been part of that. And uh, but you know we don't make excuses. I just think uh, you know you need to get better in these next two games we have. I mean it doesn't get a lot easier for us, and uh, you know three losses in a row. I, um, yeah, I think this team will really fight, and, and hopefully we'll get ourselves a, a chance to win against Quincy. Quincy is on Thursday night, and then Truman State makes their first appearance in Jewel as members of the GLVC. Quickly, Quincy, what do we know about them? Uh, they're very good, and they had a lot of their players back from last year, and, and one of the uh, Hannah Weedman, who's 6'5", Marina 6'4", uh, transfer Division One, is a great player. And, uh, you know, we split with them last year, played really well at their place and, and beat them, and then uh, lost them by six or eight here. Uh, they're top of the conference also. Um, so it, that would be a big win for us. Um, again, they, they play really hard and, and very well coached and very disciplined, and, and uh, you know, we're going to play pretty well to, to have a chance there. The newcomers, Truman, any uh, scouting on them? Watch them play at Northwest Missouri State, and when they beat Northwest by 25 or 26, they're uh, uh, really a very talented team. Really, they play so hard, and, and they're big and strong, and so uh, it, it really doesn't get easier uh, for us. But um, you know, one of the things that Coach Brad and I have talked a lot with our team is that we've got to beat you know, you know, some of these teams, and and uh, to have a chance and to get ourselves in a better position rather than just kind of settling. And um, you know, again, I, I love playing games like this. I just think that really tests your team and and, and tests their character. And um, you know, I, I love this group. They're just fun to coach. They work hard. They're, they're positive. And and we're going to get one of these teams um, and, and get a big win for us. It's Quincy on Thursday night, Truman on Saturday afternoon for the Cardinal women, and we thank Jill for coming in and spending some time with us inside the Cardinal Playbook. Larry Holly is up next when we return. What should we do? Better call our shelter agent. Yeah. Hey, Tom, you got a sec? Yeah, sure. We know what the weather is like in your area because we live in your area. Shelter insurance for your auto, home, and life. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Ask shelter agent Kimberly Seddon about shelter's competitive insurance rates. 
We now welcome Larry Holly into Inside the Cardinal Playbook. Coach, uh, it's been, just like with the women's team, kind of a tough road since St. Joe's with three straight losses and two this weekend at s and uh, at Drury on Saturday. Let's talk about s and first because uh, I think you were hugely disappointed from beginning to end in that game with, with, with uh, how things went. Well, we didn't play well. Uh, and we didn't shoot well. Bad combination. I, I thought it might have been our poorest performance of the year. And give credit to S and T. Absolutely, give credit to them. They uh, they played very well, shot it well, and deserved to win. They they outplayed us, outcoached us, uh, out everything to us. And and yet we still had a chance. But uh, uh, you know they're improved. They play a different style. They press and uh, they run and they're very athletic and uh, they just. Uh, they, you know, they beat us to the loose basketballs, all that sort of thing, and uh, deserved the win. Uh, but very disappointed, uh, not in just the loss, but we didn't have perhaps the effort that uh, that we anticipated and, and have expected every time out. You know, that, that point you made about being very athletic was what impressed me. They were better than I think we heard that they were, at least what I heard that they were, just simply because they got up and ran end line to end line. I, w I wasn't surprised by their athletic ability because I watched video and uh, talked to coaches, so that, that was not, that wasn't a surprise. We were certainly prepared. We just didn't step up to the challenge. Uh, uh, and. You know, and they, they played, I think they played one of their top games, and their backs were kind of against the wall. They hadn't won a conference game, right. and they won two last week. They beat us, and they beat Rockhurst, and uh, so they're kind of back uh, back there. You know, I think they're actually tied with us in terms of the number of wins. So there'll be a challenge when they come back here, but uh, uh, we simply didn't play. We weren't on top of our game, and that was disappointing. I heard you make a comment at some point about 50-50 uh, balls. It's kind of like soccer when the ball is up for grabs, when it's equally obtainable by either team. Is that where we kind of fell short? Is that what you're talking about, lack of effort and, and that sort of thing? We did, and that also occurred in the in a little bit in the Drury game, although our effort was pretty good in the Drury game. But, you know, it just, uh, it just seemed like in that S&T game, they got every every basketball that was loose that could have gone either way. I'll bet they got 90 percent of them. Right. And that normally doesn't happen that way. And sometimes it just bounces the wrong way. And that happened in, in that game as well. That we're doing all the right things and the ball just doesn't bounce sure. our way. Yep. So it was one of those games where we didn't get the breaks, we didn't get the 50/50s, uh, we didn't play particularly well, and we didn't shoot well. And those are that's a that's a bad grouping of opportunities to be successful. Yeah. Clint McCullough had another big night at Missouri S&T. However, sprained his ankle, he was able to return. Uh, but Cyril Belong sprained his ankle, was not able to return. And I think uh, Devontae Bell had some back spasms. So we are banged up a little bit toward the end of that game. We, we had some issues. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll start with Devontae Bell. Devontae has had some back problems, uh, some spasms, that sort of thing. We've had to rest him at times. He's had some knee issues. And uh, he's just old, you know. He's a senior. <laughs> he's our only senior. So I give him a hard time about age. But... But what's funny is he turned to me and asked to come out of the game. His back was hurting him, and the very in the next ten seconds, he he went up for a rebound above the. Now right. this guy's five foot ten. If you haven't seen him play, he goes above the rim and grabs a rebound as high as anybody on either yeah. team. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but it you know it comes and goes, and uh, he's he's going to compete if he's able to. But he was he was struggling, had to give him some rest uh, when didn't necessarily want to. Uh, and then Cyril sprained his ankle in the first half and uh, uh, was not able to come back second second half, which which hurt us in terms of depth. And then uh, McCullough also turned his ankle, uh, continued to play on it, and uh, as you know, it swelled up quite a bit, and he wasn't able to go against Drury. But uh, injuries are a part of the game. You got to have other guys step up and play, and and we had guys that did that. Uh, we just weren't over, able to overcome uh, all that uh, S&T threw at us. Let's move on to the Drury game then. You uh, play the team that's number seven in the nation uh, when we face them. Coming off a national championship, going to their building, all difficult things to do, uh, and yet you played them very, very closely for most of that game. We did. We did. Uh, for about 25 minutes, we were we were right there. I think it was a five-point game with, I'd have to look at the, at the second half times, but it, either 15 or 14 minutes to play. And then we just kind of hit a wall, and they just took off. They just uh, yeah. dominated us the last uh, 15 minutes of that game, as, as a good team will. And we just didn't have the manpower to, to compete uh, on that particular night. It wasn't, wasn't lack of effort. I was really pleased with the effort. Uh, 
And uh, but they, you know, they're an excellent defensive team. They took us out of our rhythm, some of the things that we do, and uh, uh, that was again disappointing. But that's a credit to Drury, and that's why they're nationally ranked. You know, our I think our league had what five teams in the top 23 mm -hmm. yes. last week, and and maybe three in the top 10. So it's. Uh, uh, it's a special league. Uh, we're trying to get to that level and uh, very proud of the effort that we had for the most part in that game. Uh, we did have a letdown in the last 15 minutes, but uh, give credit to, to Drury for being part of the reason for that. McCullough does not play in the game, doesn't suit up, and so you insert Cyril Blong into the starting lineup. Where does Who's the five in that lineup? Mosby? Well, Mosby would have been, and we recruited him to play the three. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's basically a four. and uh, But, it, you know, it's... Uh, doesn't matter. You just step up, and play, right. and do your assignment, and, and uh, it was. It's a, been a little bit of a challenge for Surreal because Surreal has played nothing but the three in his first two years, which is a perimeter position. Now we're asking him to play the four, and so we had to do a lot of extra reps. It uh, limited us limited us somewhat in what we were able to do, just because of his right. lack of familiarity at that spot. So he's trying to get caught up on that, and. Uh, uh, but we had, you know, we had we have other guys that step up and play, and uh, gives an opportunity for Leith Jach, who's coming off that injury, and and to uh, Christopher Morrison, uh, uh, freshman, uh, who doesn't get a lot of playing time, but uh, is getting better every day, and and then uh, we may just go with four guards sometimes, yeah, and uh, uh, the only problem is our guards are short, <laughs> which, which uh, makes it a little more difficult rebounding wise and matchup wise sometimes against the other teams three and fours, but. Uh, but again, was was pleased with the effort, uh, if not the result at Drury. Quincy this weekend will be the Thursday night opponent, and then Truman State on Saturday afternoon. And what do we need to do against Quincy? Well, we need to we need to play well. We we did not we had we just did not play well at S and T, uh, and certainly we didn't play well in the last 15 minutes at Drury. We we and we had come off a very good week in Indiana. Yes. We played extremely well against St. Joseph's and extremely well, except for the 20 turnovers, at Indy. Uh, had a chance to beat Indy. Uh, and so we've got to get back to, to that. Uh, part of it's health. Uh, uh, part of it is these other teams are, are uh, uh, you know, playing really good defense against what we're trying to get done offensively. We're not getting a lot of open looks from three. Uh, and, you know, you, you take a look at the, at the games we've lost, and. And we've been below 40 percent, you know, sometimes 32 percent, 35, 36 percent. And uh, defensively, we've got, we have to get better. We're, we're giving up high percentage shots and uh, teams are shooting lights out against us. And, and that's, that's a challenge when, when you're not shooting the ball as well as you'd like. But uh, I think we'll do that. We had a good practice. Uh, we'll have good practices this week and uh, hopefully uh, be back ready to go against Quincy Thursday night. Coach, this is tough to say after we've been in the league for two years, but I think this league is better this year than it has in our other two years. At least the teams we've seen so far, they've been all teams that look like they could compete for a national championship. It's a pretty good league, isn't it? Yeah, it is a good league. It's a pretty good league. Uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, here's St. Joseph's. Uh, you know, they gave us all we wanted. They yeah. jumped on us 21-7 uh, to 7 and playing at home, and, and they're fighting for their life to, to get a win, and uh, S&T the same way. and. And uh, all of a sudden, we're two and five, and we're going to be scrambling to try to get into those playoffs. And so, uh, we expect to have good practices. We uh, hope to get everybody healthy and and uh, play well this week. Thursday night, the Cardinals back at home against Quincy. That'll be about a 7:30 start for the men, and then Saturday afternoon, approximately 3:30, the Cardinal men take on Truman State. First time for Truman to come into uh, our building as a member of the GLVC. When we come back on Inside the Cardinal Playbook, a special feature with former Jewel quarterback Sean Shelton. He has signed to play overseas in Paris, and we'll visit with him about that in a moment. The best day of your life will go by in a blur. We created Storybook Wedding KC to capture every memory for you in a beautiful video. Relive each moment in a way photographs can't do alone. You will hear the emotion in his voice as he promises to love you forever. See the way your beautiful dress flows as you walk down the aisle and dance at your reception. Listen to your loved ones share their best memories of you or heartfelt advice that you will cherish years from now when they are gone. 
Feel like a celebrity as Storybook Wedding KC films your best moments to be shared and treasured forever. And now first and a half yard, Sean's going to take it himself, and we're within a point of uh, uh, tying this game. Well, that was a nice surge by the offensive line. Paris. Uh, when you say Paris, of course, you're talking about uh, going to play football in Paris. And, right. Uh, just let's go from start to finish. How did that all start up, and, and how did you get signed on there? Okay, well, there's a, there's a really, really good website for all American football players, and North American football players, really. Uh, called Euro players and you know I didn't know how realistic of an option it would actually be but a few players uh, before me had tried it so I figured might as well sign up what's the right. worst that could happen uh, so I made an account put my highlight film on there and uh, apparently American quarterbacks are really really valuable right. in Europe um, so I, I started seeing a lot of a lot of hits and getting a lot of contacts and uh, then there's a few teams that actually offered and this this team in Paris was was one of those teams and I kind of weighed the pros and cons of each team and decided to go with this one but uh, it was all via this website and and uh, it's it's amazing what the internet has done yeah absolutely so, absolutely and then I, I ended up skyping with the coach and and thought it was a good fit so I uh, signed my contract a couple weeks ago. French football, how many leagues do they have and, and the league you're in, how does it rank in those leagues? Well, the, the way it usually works in Europe is each country has uh, several leagues. It's almost like NCAA f for the United States. Oh, okay. So right. French league has uh, three divisions. Um, and I'll be playing in the Premier League. The top league. Right. Yeah. So uh, they call it pair, like France Elite or something like right. that. But there's right. also a Division Two and there's also a Division Three. And the way it works is the, the champion of the lower leagues move up. And the worst yeah. two leagues, or the worst two teams from the top leagues, or either one or two, uh, play each other and the loser moves down. So it's, air, it's always fluid. Okay. And, uh, but I will be playing, they lost in the semifinals, the team I will be playing, the Ellen Court Templars, is... Uh, Let's slow down and say that again, what's the name? It's Ellen Court <laughs> Templars is the American way to say it. Okay. And I'm working on my French, so I think it's Ellen Court Templars. But, nice. Uh, I'm trying Rosetta Stone. You know, I, well, I gotta tell you, you know, in those French, they have a different name for everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all the words are different. Oh, you know yeah. that, right? Oh, I'm okay. slowly learning. Okay. But uh, they lost in the semifinals of the Premier League last year, so they retained their Division One status, and uh, hopefully we can uh, improve upon that this season. Only two Americans, though, for each team? Uh, it, every team's allowed three Americans. Three. And uh, our team opt for only two, and then they actually pay another French player. Uh, he's actually my roommate. He played at the University of Montreal as a receiver. Okay. So they pay him, although he's French. But... Uh, it's uh, it's three Americans on each team usually, and only two are out on the field at the same time. So how do they, how do they mark them? Do you have a little red, white, and blue star? Uh, or I, don't, I have no idea. But uh, <laughs> uh, most of the time they bring over a quarterback, okay. and then they bring over two uh, players who play both ways. Is usually the way it works. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, they they decided to bring over an American quarterback. So and, and they offered you a contract really without ever having talked to you. You talked to them after they'd already offered you a yeah. contract. Yeah. What uh, was that conversation like? Uh, you know, just um, more so just getting to know each other. Um, it was briefly describing what European football is like because I don't think many people know, and I I sure sure, I sure didn't. But uh, it was more so just getting to know each other because I've I've always felt like it was really important who I played for and the relationship there and I, I brought that into college recruiting and which which college I selected and it, it was the same thing here right. and um, I felt like we got along well he had a good sense of humor good English which was important right uh, so it was just it was just more so uh, well tell me about you and I'll tell you I'll right. tell you about myself right. type of deal what are your responsibilities? Uh, how long is the season? What's the practice schedule going to be like? What other things are you into here? So it, it's it's all club sports over there. Uh, so most of the players, if not all the players on the team, besides probably myself and the other American, uh, are either going to uh, school at a local university or employed in their jobs. Okay. Um, so the practice schedule is not very strenuous. It's two times a week. But... Um, the season runs from late February 
to early June is when the playoffs start. And so I'll, I'll be, my contract is from the moment I get over there and I fly back July 8th. Uh, so it's not, it's not super strenuous as in time consuming, but I'll be obligated to practice with the team, obviously. Uh, I compete on the weekends, usually Saturday nights. And then I'll also be coaching their B team. Okay. So they have their premier team within the league, and then they have under 18, under you know, so-and-so, right. just like club teams right. over here. But they have a senior A group and a senior B group. A group okay. is the one that competes and travels. And the, the B group competes as well, but it's not... It's like the 18... They, they call them rookies. They're 18 to 20-year-olds. Okay. So it's almost like a... a uh, college JV team, if you will. So I'll be obligated to coach, uh, I assume, the quarterbacks for them. Right, so you're not going to be the head coach, but you'll be one of the assistants who right. works under someone else. Right. Uh, they're mainly bringing, they, they like to bring over American quarterbacks to teach them the position because it's, it's a, such a unique position and there's nothing like it in sports. Uh, and without practicing it and really playing American football, it's hard to walk in and be sure. good at it. Sure. So. Uh, with the inexperience of Europe in general in American football, they like to bring over American quarterbacks to teach the position. And that's I, that's will be my responsibility. You're going to fly over there, get off the plane, and you're the starting quarterback for this team right away, correct? Right. Uh, how do you feel about that? I mean, you've competed all your life, and now are you just going to be the guy? Well, yeah, uh, but just because I'll be starting, in my opinion, quarterback is much more than just being on the field. Right. And... Uh, Although it won't be necessarily a competition for my position, it'll be a competition to try to earn um, men. I mean, I'm playing with 33, right. 32, you know. So earn men's respect in a different culture with a language barrier. And uh, so I, I almost think it's more of a challenge than anything I've ever done. Right. Right. Because I have to have men a decade older than me respect me when I'm... Really ignorant to their culture yeah, and right. their language, so uh, it's going to be a challenge. But uh, I'm up for it. The coaching side of it. Once you uh, get done, wherever that is, whenever that is, coaching is in your future. Right. So that, that was also an attractive thing because um, I get coaching experiences and I, I get to bring that experience to my profession back in the states. So it's not it's not all just a vacation or playing football which is which it is but I'll also be getting experience in in what I want to do as a career so uh, just the combination of it and how the time frame worked out it was just really really an ideal situation for me nervous and, a little bit oh very nervous oh yeah very nervous anxious I mean I don't know anybody over there I'm going I'm gonna be submerged in a culture that I don't really know a ton about I mean I've been reading up on it but you don't really know until you're there right. Right. and uh, yeah, uh, no, no close friends. I'm going to reinvent myself. Right. But uh, I think it would just be a huge, huge growing experience for me. And I'm going to learn a lot about Sean Shelton while I'm over there. And uh, it's, it's going to be really, really exciting. How can we keep up to date with you, uh, website? And, and give us the name of the team again. It's the Allen Court Templars. So it's E-L-A-N -E Court. But they don't pronounce the T, which throws me off. And then... <laughs> Uh, Templars, but it's spelled in French, so it's I E R S at the end. But uh, they have a website, and they also have a Daily Motion um, website where they where they put all the games on replay. Okay. And this is all just Google it, and it, it comes up. Uh, right. So it's not it's not hard to find, uh, but I think they live stream games. But I'm not 100 percent sure on the website, but I know for a fact the Daily Motion website. It's called Templars TV. And they, they replay all the games and all the interviews and just kind of like what we do here sure. is, their, is their version of William Jewel Cardinal's Athletic Sports Network. Sure, sure. right, right, yeah. right, right. You never could quite get no, that right. No, no, I always struggle with it. But <laughs> the words are there just out of order. Well, hey, congratulations on your graduation. Thank and you we're real much. excited about your future in France. Yes. And uh, when you get back in July, we'll do this all again and reflect on how it all went. How's that sound? It sounds good. Hello, I'm Rachel Callagy, Head Connection Specialist with Welcome Opportunities. My background is in advertising and marketing, and when I decided to open up my own company, I was looking for a way to help small businesses connect with a target market that I thought might have the most return on investment. And I realized that new residents uh, don't have any prior preferences. They respond well to coupons, but they're not using them as a one-off. I kind of thought that there was a great fit between small companies that needed 
customers and customers that needed small companies. My business is about reaching a pool of customers who have yet to have any affiliation or affinity for a competitor. It's more than just a welcome, it's more of a way to actually construct um, a media campaign. Please reach me at 816-883-8633 or my website www.welcomeopportunities.com. And that's all this week inside the Cardinal Playbook. We thank Coach Larry Holly, Coach Jill Kress, and Sean Shelton for visiting with us. We'll be back next week with more Inside the Cardinal Playbook.